here is the orbital rim and here we have our orbital retaining ligament. We can always see as a shadow the zygomatic ligament. Here is our here is our our zygomatic arch. So this is almost uh, the way of our zygomatic ligament, which is coming together as the tetraf ligament. Here in the mandibular line, we have another ligament, which is also a strong ligament, the mandibular ligament. Zygomatic major muscle, which is coming from here on the depth. And where is it running? It is running to the modulus. This is one point where all these mimic muscles also come together. It's an anchor point, yeah? The modulus, about one centimeter lateral of the mouth corner. Facial artery is always laterally attached to the modulus, but under, under the mimic muscles in this part. So, the facial artery, and she's coming from something like here, and before she reaches the modulus, she gives the lower labial artery about one centimeter uh, below the, the, um, the inferior uh, labia. And we come, the uh, facial artery is running up within the nasolabial fold. And here she makes some loops. And that's why also, especially here beside the ala nasi, it is very easy with a needle to, to, to reach and to inject this facial artery, which then is running like this upwards. And here she makes an anastomosis with the supratrochlear artery. Yeah. And then we have here the supraorbital artery. So at the bottom of the nose, Mainly we can find an anastomosis in between the right side and the left side of the angular artery. Here, a little bit above the ala nasi, we have the nasal artery, which then is going to all these capillaries. Yeah. Here, one centimeter above the upper lip, yeah, and here is the lower lip, the upper lip, the labial, superior labial artery is running in the depths or in the muscle or between muscle and mucosa. And then from the depths, it's running up at the columellar artery to give some capillaries here. The facial vein is running the same way, but is going upwards like this. And before it reaches the Zygomatic ligament, yeah, the facial vein gives its branch as the angular vein, and you can see it. You can see a bluish discoloration. So this is the angular vein, and it is right at the bottom of our tear trough deformity. So here is our angular vein, yeah, probably a little bit more in the medial part. In one third of parts, the facial artery is running with the vein, yeah, and is going this way. The infraorbital, the infraorbital foramen, we can find with open eye and look straight. Yeah. Okay. So, in the mid pupillary line, we learned it in our anatomy, but it is not true. Normally, the infraorbital foramen. Ah, have you seen? It hurts. In the infraorbital foramen, I say, I call it, we find it in the medial iris line. Yeah? And it depends on the youth of the patient. Sometimes it is one centimeter below the inferior orbital rim. The older the patients are, the less is the distance. And then you have the infraorbital artery with its branches. And we have also, I, I think for, for the injection technique with cannula, it's not of importance, the transversal facial artery, the SOOF in between orbital retaining ligament, medial SOOF, 
and lateral sous. Here we have the temporal tunnel. Yeah. Here is the temporal tunnel. And here we are above the cygomatic arch. The deep medial cheek fat compartment, the deep medial cheek fat compartment, right here. In a three-dimensional point of view, in this small triangle, but it is going down like, like this, yeah? It's going this direction downwards. We have our deep med lateral cheek fat compartment, yeah? And uh, so we have to go down, but to the, uh, sliding on the bone to the depths, yeah? To reach this compartment. It is located much bigger like this, but in a three-dimensional way, like in a hangman. Yeah, you have to 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 think about that this uh, zygomatic major muscle that there is a septum like a hangman going down. Yeah, 